I'm Alo. Welcome to the series of Walk and Talk. Today we are going to talk to Dr. Aparna Kashinath, who heads the regulated large molecule laboratory in clinical development and carries a rich experience of 20 years. Let's talk to Dr. Aparna. Hi, Dr. Aparna. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Alo. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Dr. Aparna, you have been there in the field of uh, biotherapeutics for quite long, close to 20 years now. Tell me, how have you seen the entire field evolving? Well, there's a lot that has really changed in, in this field. Um, you know, small molecules were actually the basis of disease research earlier, has now moved to large molecule. And, and in the large molecule itself, what used to be traditional uh, large molecule therapies have now moved into precision medicine, uh, you know, into combination therapy. So that way, there is a more target based research that is now going on in this field. And I also see a lot of uh, focus on uh, vaccines and especially infectious diseases therapeutics. Uh, in the bioanalytical field, what has happened is we have also evolved and moved with these changes. So we are uh, developing and validating many more target-based assays uh, for immunogenicity and PK in order to be supplying data to clinicians, to our patients, as well as regulators to really answer relevant questions for a certain trial or study. So really a lot has changed uh, in the last decade or so. <laughs> Great. So what are the key, some of the key research areas uh, that you know, the companies across the globe are uh, focusing on these days? Um, lots actually, uh, in, in terms of key research areas, I would say there's a lot of uh, focus on uh, rare diseases. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's focus, as I said earlier, on combination therapies. There's focus on immuno-oncology. That's something that's really, uh, you know, one of the primary disease focus in many R&D uh, labs of manufacturers. And then there's a lot of focus on studying a special population um, and a focus on, uh, uh, you know, repurposing molecules. For example, already approved therapeutics are being repurposed uh, to be able to, uh, you, know, you know, for their ability to go and target, uh, you know, uh, similar targets. Um, and then this really kind of sets off a completely different therapeutic cascade. So that's really interesting. A lot of uh, work again on, um, on uh, 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 prophylactic as well as therapeutic uh, vaccines against uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2. So I find that many R&D laboratories are actually dedicating their staff to study different types of therapies against SARS-CoV-2. That is really interesting. So all in all, uh, the last decade or so has really brought up, uh, you know, different challenges and, and I believe R&D laboratories have been able to, uh, you know, uh, stand up to those challenges and uh, using the scientific skills. Great, great. So quite wide spectrum of research uh, areas in large molecules. So Dr. Aparna, can you share with me some of the interesting projects that your team is working on? Well, there's a lot that uh, my group is working on. While we are still focusing on novel biologics and biosimilars, so within that area, there's also a lot of work that we're doing on bispecific antibodies. We're working on bites, working on fusion proteins. Uh, and a lot of our work uh, is, is also in the vaccine area, where we've actually translated our immunogenicity capabilities from biologics into actually, you know, from unwanted biologics uh, immunogenicity to wanted uh, vaccine immunogenicity. That's something that we're doing actively. Uh, in response to the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, a lot of work we have done on RT-PCR, uh, on, on uh, setting up assays for RT-PCR. We do a lot of work on um, um, uh, uh, subgenomic RNA uh, assays, and then uh, uh, you know multitude of serology assays, uh, both ELISA, MSD multiplex, and we're also doing a lot of uh, neutralizing antibody assays for SARS-CoV-2. So that way, it's a lot of work, very exciting as well as very gratifying work is being done. Indeed, exciting and gratifying. Thanks. Thanks for the insight. Would you Thanks. like to take a look at the lab? Absolutely. Please, let's okay. go. So there has been a lot of really impactful and cutting edge work in the bioanalytical lab. What is unique about Syngene that helps us create success stories here? Well, it's a good question. I think we're a highly motivated uh, bunch of scientists and we are constantly excited with challenges so that's one of our uniqueness. The other thing is we are constantly reinventing, remodeling, uh, re-innovating our own selves um, and uh, that's something that's really highly advantageous and we're able to extrapolate our learnings from one project, from one uh, aspect or from one area to another. That's something that's really helped us uh, you know, be a successful CRO. 
the last but not the least is our uh, you know our commitment towards doing the right thing for our patients for our scientists and towards the regulators that's something that i believe is a, you know it's a very uh, uh, you know it's a highly successful factor for us as a cr very insightful discussion dr aparna thank you so much for joining us today thanks thank you so that was dr aparna talking to us about the innovations in the biotherapeutics field and how syngene has been contributing in the area thank you so much for joining us today